Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to install AP2 intake valve retainers on an AP1 Honda S2000. As I briefly discussed in a previous video, AP1 intake valve retainers can crack as a result of a mechanical overrev or misshift and can lead to drop valves and thus a blown motor. The most common way to prevent or fix cracked AP1 intake valve retainers is to upgrade them to AP2 intake valve retainers, which are more durable. This job can be quite intimidating to tackle, so if you haven't already, I highly suggest you watch my video on inspecting valve retainers and performing a valve adjustment as they will be very relevant. Anyway, let's get to it. Before you start this procedure, you want to ensure the motor is cold. Depending on how tall you are, you might want to jack up the front of the car as it will make the job a lot easier on your back. Once you're ready to tackle the job, remove the valve cover. If you need help doing that, I've got videos that will be linked down below. Once the valve cover is off, you need a little extra room to work with. Remove the fuel rail cover and then unclip the injector wiring harness from the fuel rail. Now you want to set up cylinder 1 so that it is at top dead center. You can tell when a cylinder is at top dead center because the exhaust camshaft lobes will point to 11 o'clock and the intake camshaft lobes will point to 2 o'clock. You can also tell when a cylinder is at top dead center by looking at the timing marks on the cam gears. For cylinder 1, the timing marks on the cam gears will be pointing inwards towards each other. Additionally, when cylinder 1 is at top dead center, the arrow on the front timing chain cover should point to the two notches on the crankshaft pulley. With the car in neutral, use a 19mm wrench to turn the crankshaft clockwise so that cylinder 1 reaches top dead center. Now you have to remove the camshafts. Begin this process by loosening all the valve adjustment screws with the valve adjustment tool. This ensures that the camshafts aren't putting pressure on the cam caps. Once the valves are loose, you can remove the camshaft caps. Carefully loosen the camshaft cap bolts a half a turn at a time, starting from the outsides of the motor and working your way towards the middle of the motor. Repeat this pattern several times until all the bolts are hand loosenable. Once all the bolts are loose, lift the tops of the camshaft caps off and keep the bolts with them. Now, lift the intake and exhaust camshaft off the camshaft caps and place them on the side. Lastly, you'll want to remove the bottom of the camshaft caps. If you're having trouble working them loose, you can insert two screwdrivers into each of them and rock them back and forth until they break free. When you lift them out, ensure that you lift them out all at once and place them down so that they won't separate or else the inner VTEC pins can fall out. Once the camshaft caps are removed, you should place shop towels in areas of the head where a valve retainer keeper might fall, like the oil holes and near the timing chain. The main purpose of this next step is to ensure that the valves for the cylinder you're working on don't fall into the engine. You really, really don't want this to happen. There are two general approaches to ensure this doesn't happen. You can hold the valves up using compressed air, or you can fill a cylinder with nylon rope. On top of this, you're going to want to make sure that the cylinder you're working on is always at top dead center, just as a failsafe. If the cylinder you're working on is at top dead center and a valve drops, it will rest on the piston, and you'll be able to pull it back up. For this video, I chose to use nylon rope since my air compressor is noisy and nylon rope is more accessible. Before you can fill your cylinder with nylon rope, you need to remove the spark plug for the cylinder you're working on with a spark plug socket and extension. Once the spark plug is removed, you're going to move the cylinder you're working on to the opposite of top dead center in order to make it easier to feed in the nylon rope. It can be difficult to know where a cylinder is with the camshafts removed. So one thing you can do is insert something long and thin into the cylinder to see how it moves when the crankshaft is rotated. I ended up using the oil dipstick, but you could also use something like a wooden dowel. Rotate the crankshaft until you notice that the instrument you're using has hit its lowest point.
At this point, attach the nylon rope to the instrument you're using and insert it into the bottom of the cylinder. At this point, you should be able to push the nylon rope down the spark plug tube to feed it into the cylinder. You should only need to feed four feet of nylon rope into the cylinder. Once you have enough nylon rope in the cylinder, rotate the crankshaft until the crankshaft refuses to rotate. At this point, the cylinder will have compressed the nylon rope against the head, ensuring that there is no room for the valve to drop. Here is where you get down to business and finally replace the retainers. For this step, you should ideally be able to use the valve string compressor tool to release the valve retainers and keepers, but in my experience, the valve keepers end up being stuck. For this reason, I recommend using the valve keeper removal tool, especially if you're using the compressed air method to keep the valves in place. Anyway, place the valve keeper removal tool onto the valves for the cylinder that you're working on and hit it with a hammer. This will push the spring down and release the valve retainers and keepers. Additionally, the tool will capture the valve retainers and keepers with its strong magnet, ensuring that you don't risk the keepers flying away. Once the AP1 valve retainers and keepers are off the car, store them in a plastic baggie, just in case. Now mount the spring compressor tool onto the cylinder head for the intake valves for the cylinder you're working on. Insert the new AP2 retainers on top of the valve springs. Use the spring compressor tool to compress the valve spring and retainer until there is enough space to insert the keepers. Carefully insert the AP2 valve keepers onto the AP2 retainer and orient them so they are right side up and sitting on opposite sides of the valve. This might take a little bit of fiddling with the included small flathead screwdriver. Once the keepers are in the right place, you can decompress the valve spring and retainer. As you decompress the valve spring and retainer, the keepers should slide up along the valve until they reach the notch in the valve stem which will hold them in place. Once you've replaced the valve retainers for both of the valves, you'll need to remove the nylon rope. Rotate the crankshaft away from top dead center so that the piston is no longer putting pressure on the nylon rope and pull the rope out of the cylinder. Reinstall the spark plug for the cylinder by using a spark plug socket and an extension. Torque it to 25 foot-pounds. Lastly, remove the valve spring compressor from the cylinder head. At this point, you're ready to move on to the rest of the cylinders. You can use a 19mm wrench to rotate the crankshaft pulley in order to get a different piston into position where you can feed some nylon rope into it. Make sure to repeat steps 4 through 6 for every cylinder. Once all the valve retainers have been replaced, you can begin putting things back together. Remove any shop towels from the cylinder head and remove the 19mm wrench from the crankshaft bolt if it's still there. Before you replace the camshafts, you need to ensure that the crankshaft is at top dead center. Rotate the crankshaft pulley with a 19mm wrench until the arrow on the front timing chain cover is pointing at the two notches on the crankshaft pulley. Then place the bottoms of the camshaft caps onto the cylinder head. Use a rubber mallet to knock them into place. The next part is slightly nerve wracking. You need to reinstall the intake and exhaust camshafts onto the camshaft caps and ensure that the camshafts are set to top dead center as well. Setting the timing incorrectly could ruin your motor, so you want to make sure you do this right. Carefully lower the camshafts onto the bottom of the camshaft caps and adjust them until the timing marks on the cam gears point directly at each other and are also parallel to the cylinder head. Once you're confident the camshafts are on correctly, Place the top of the camshaft caps onto the camshafts. Hand tighten the camshaft bolts. Then tighten the camshaft cap bolts a half a turn at a time starting from the middle of the motor and slowly making your way to the outsides of the motor in the following pattern. Torque the camshaft cap bolts to 16 foot-pounds.
With the camshafts back in place, you might be eager to call it a day, but you still need to readjust the valves back to spec since you loosened them earlier. If you need help doing this, I've got a video that will be linked down below. With the valves adjusted, replace the fuel rail cover and replace the injector wiring harness onto the fuel rail. Then reinstall the valve cover. If you need help doing that, I've got videos that will be linked down below. At this point the car is back together and ready to go. Get in your car, pray that you didn't botch the camshaft timing, and start the F20C to listen to the sweet, sweet sound of 237 Japanese unicorns! I know this video was relatively long, but I really hope it helps some of you out there tackle this job. If you found this video helpful or entertaining, give this video a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. As always, leave a comment down below for a DIY you'd like to see in the future.